Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky, and he's going to be telling us about... I assume I know what he's going to be telling us about, but before we figure that out, if you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, bloopers if they happen. Uh, we're still trying to get that uh, $20,000 goal on Patreon, because it's a biggin'. Uh, if that happens, I will be manning the episode for uh, Warhammer Fantasy. Try and get Bricky converted. Just one episode. Just one. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, tell them about that other stuff. Other stuff. Mm. See, there's some really good other stuff. Mm. Uh, we're going to be finishing up Master of Mankind real quick, so you make sure you get that done. But more importantly, we have new merch ding 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 sign the alarm bell ring the gong activate the bat symbol there is new (laughs) merch and it is the first ever drop of sweatpants yo let's go Uh, we have not done sweats before i just got all the stuff for it all of the important tech to get them printed and we're gonna start off right you know rather less is more get Mm -hmm. a good old th- pair of both gray as well as black sweatpants with the great Adric logo on it. Um, it's got, it's kind of like puffed up, Like you can kind of like feel it. It's got like the, it's like a, it's like a puff design type of thing. Oh. It feels really, really good on the sweatpants. And I also kind of want to like, I don't know, word of mouth. It's a little difficult. The sweatpants are really, really nice. Uh-huh. So for the first week, from today, Wednesday, till the next episode, they will be all 10% off to Ooh. celebrate the launch to start with and also to get it into the hands of as many of you as we can. So you can be like, oh, damn, this is nice. And you can tell your friends. So Hell sweatpants, yeah. Adric sweatpants available now. New merch, ding, ding, 10% off for a week in the description, orchid 8 Mm, I need to buy me a pair. And actually, I think you'd probably, if you keep wearing that I'm a Tank hoodie as much as you do, you're probably never going to take these sweatpants off. Oh, I, gee whiz, Rick. I Okay, one, never say that again. Oh, that's right. I, uh, yeah, you know, you're, right. you're and, right. And two, yeah, I've I've worn these sweatpants for like every day for the past like week, the various <laughs> colors and stuff, and I'm... <laughs> Like, all right. Thrilled with them. I need to stop. I need to wash these. Oh, you haven't been washing them? You just gave them the... No, I had like I had like three pairs to test out sizes and stuff. So okay, it's it's fine. Don't worry. Wink, wink. Don't worry about it. Same same pair for like flies are humming around and it's fine, guys. I'm just testing it. It's like brick. You smell like raw sewage mixed with. Puke. What am I, a, a baseball player with like five million superstitions? <laughs> That's just sports people in general. That is true. As any sports person, yeah. So, All right, Bricky, what what are we doing? I think I know what we're doing, but I'm not. I don't know. You could have you could have thrown me a curveball. You you know you know what you know what we're doing. Yeah, we're doing the lion, aren't we? We're doing the lion. We have to do the lion. I mean, we have to do. We the lion. have to do the lion. Yeah. The new Arcs of Omen book comes out uh, later this week, so today oh. will be the lion, and the next week will be the Arcs of Omen book on the lion. Oh, I didn't realize the Arcs of Omen book was coming out that soon. I thought there was still a little time before that came out. Nope, it is next up. Hell yeah! So. We need to naturally discuss the lion. And, of course, like with every Primark discussion, it is giving me crippling anxiety because these episodes will always be looked at with the Mm -hmm. most scrutable eye because no matter how many times Warhammer fans say they're tired of Space Marines, they get, oh boy, really salty if you don't do a Primark right. Yep, yep. Welcome to another episode of Greater Expectations. Mm -hmm. You chose the wrong channel. Well, I, of course, we have to start with a quote, though, naturally. Okay, naturally. <clears throat> of all the Primarchs, save perhaps Mortarian, Lionel Johnson stands apart. Par- partially, this is due to his taciturn nature. A brooding silence hangs over him at all times. 
Yet there is something more, something buried beneath his noble exterior. Perhaps this is a result of his upbringing, growing to maturity alone in the monster-ridden forest of Caliban. Even at a council of war, the lion moves like an apex predator. He is always watching, always planning, always hunting. He unnerves even his brothers. By Ooh, Malkador the Sigilite. So one might say he, he's an apex legend. Mozambique here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know any apex legend references because I'm terrible at BRs. Yeah, I know. So... The lion, much like with the prior Primarchs, I've I've found it to be a much better way to recount the deeds of them to a certain extent, Um, particularly during the Horsey and the Great Crusade. There are like 9,000 battles that occur, but Mm -hmm. the more important thing is to get you to understand the lion, to understand the important, like how the lion operates and, and what he's like. Because okay. to get to get what the lion is all about makes more, uh, it's a better understanding of who he is. Okay. Okay. So, as we all know, all the uh, gestation pods grabbed, thrown into the warp, yeeted by chaos. His pod landed on the feudal death world of oh. Caliban, located okay. rather close to the Eye of Terror. All right. Now, Caliban had its surface covered by immense forests. It was a giant forest world, and it was inhabited by monstrous beasts mutated by the touch of chaos after mm. the birth of Slanesh, hence its location to the Eye of Terror. Yeah. Lovely so, place for a baby to show up. Oh, yeah. It, like, this is a death world. It is a <laughs> death world. It is classified as a death world. It is basically gigantic forest teeming with now chaos roided up monsters Mm -hmm. a bunch of dinosaurs took chaos trend and and now they're goblins it's interesting because usually it it feels like if one of the gestation boards uh lands on a death world that primarch usually falls to chaos don't they usually isn't that how it goes um uh mortarian was on one um, Kurz wasn't, Angron wasn't, Pertraba wasn't, Alpharius definitely wasn't. I guess um, of the ones I've heard of, I just assume that, like, Death World usually means, eh, I'm turning I, I on mean, amps. Mortarian, definitely, mm-hmm. but the rest? Not eh, so much? Okay. No, I don't okay. think so. Um, but the Lion, yeah, his was a Death World, but his was a Death World <laughs> because of giant apex chaos beasts out in the world. So he survived in the forests alone, living as a wild man. Uh, He basically was Tarzan. Okay. And if you had to... (laughs) Basically Tarzan on a death world jungle. Okay, okay. He he was basically murder hobo Tarzan. He he grew up (laughs) much like Kurz in the sense that he was alone and had no father figure or parentals or anything. The difference was is that Kurz ate children... And, and rats and things to survive in, in, a, in an awful, awful hive world. He was oh. literally in the jungle. The mighty jungle. The lion sleeps tonight. Oh, wow. That's uh, it's pretty on the nose. I like it. Yes. He, he <laughs> lived the lion in does Tarzan. <laughs> okay. So Caliban was a post-age of um, strife era world, which, of course, the age of strife is Birth of Slanesh, Warp rift messing everything up. Yeah, everybody gets disconnected. Everybody's kind of just on their own, separated yep. from uh, Terra. So Caliban had many knightly orders of old warrior aristocrats. Uh, these were people there to um, to defend from the monsters in these massive fortress monasteries. Um, the knights maintained a couple aspects of the old technology, such as like old school bolt pistols and simple kind of power armor, uh, mm-hmm. but they were also really just pre-industrial, so they still were riding on horseback and things of that nature. They had good, some good tech, but they were not a very industrialized era. They had giant castles guarded by knights with old-school knight aristocracy. 
Oh, so they were so they were just kind of like medieval era knights guarding oh, yeah, their like, medieval castle, but they had like bolt pistols and stuff. Yeah, it's it's knights of the round table. They're one of the the main group of uh, the Dark Angels is the inner circle, uh, and they have names like Azrael, Ezekiel, Belial, Samuel. You know, all uh, okay. That stuff. I I can see why the Dark Angels would be so popular then, because that's I feel like that's such a popular aesthetic that if you really lean into it, you're gonna have a lot of like medieval night, medieval times fans. I mean, Space Marines in general are 40k or like like sci-fi knights, you know. Sure. But like the if you wanted to play as the sci-fi knights based on knights, even more so. Yeah, these, like these the, are the ones. The sci-fi space marines that are based on like the knights of the round table and Arthur and stuff like that, then it's like, oh, okay. I I get why these guys are so popular now. Right. It's it's the honestly a lot of the space marines in general are based pretty heavily on the dark angels because they were they are the first legion right oh i i guess i didn't realize that they were the first well they were the first to be found so to speak but they are their their legion number is one they are the first legion oh you know the eighth is is night lords the fourth is the iron warriors etc they are the first oh i i i was unaware of that they're number one the dark angels the first no look look Um, at you look at you so they, the, the knights, that is, they represent the most prominent organization on Caliban known as the Order. Um, and th- the lion was eventually found in a deep forest, so deep where the trees above blot, basically blot out the sun for the most part, how the thick forest canopy. And in there led some of the most dangerous creatures on Caliban. And it was here. He spent his youth. <laughs> it's a hell of a training ground. I mean, if if you're going to grow up to be a Primarch, that's that's one way to train yourself before you, you know, yeah. It Ooh. wasn't quite sure how long he was down here. Uh, we assume maybe not more than 10 years, but he's a Primarch, so God knows how he grew up like that. Yeah. But he spent basically his entire childhood in these woods. Wow. On a now, scale of one to Katachin, how brutal are these uh, jungles that he's in? I think Katachin is worse, mm-hmm. um, but I think it's simply the fact that uh, I, think, I think Katachin is worse. But Katachin has like actual industrial imperial guard stuff. These are these are dudes on horseback, so <laughs> life is life is rough. It's okay. really rough. Still um, very bad, but for a different reason. Yes, very bad, but but like they're both they're still both called death wounds. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The plants aren't trying to take over his brain, I guess. <laughs> A leaf doesn't fall on his head and brainwash him. Gotcha. Right. So eventually he met with an a group of the Order Knights. And among these knights was their hailing champion, a man named Luther. Oh. And during one of the expeditions, or hunting expeditions, they went and found him. And kind of, kind of cornered him back to a tree. This feral man out somehow in the middle of these forests. A lot of the knights wanted to kill him mm-hmm. because he's like, "This is very dangerous." <laughs> but Luther decided to go against that and instead attempt to take him in. Okay. Um, and that's what he did. He brought him into the order uh, and taught him. Him and the elders taught him English. Well, not English, to speak, basically. Yeah, high um, Gothic. Yeah, uh, low Gothic. Mm. He, uh, he never, because he had never spoken before then. Naturally. Yeah, because he was Tarzan, basically. Yeah. So, taught him to speak, taught him all kind of stuff, but of those years he spent in the forest, he would never recount. He would never talk about it. And, and if I'm not mistaken, never has. Huh. Wow, I mean, I not like he doesn't remember it. I'm just assuming it was so savage that he's just like, nope, uh, uh-uh. uh, uh, fuck that. I'm forgetting that he's, as soon as possible. He can, doesn't want to talk about it. Eat my ass. I'm not reliving that ever again in any way, shape, or form. Mm-mm. Screw you. So he was named by uh, Luther Lion L. Johnson, which is meaning Lion, son of the forest. 
in the dial dialect, which the Calibanite dialect is low Gothic. Um, so he was assimilated, assimilated into the group of the order, basically. And among the order, he was taught human ways, speak, understand culture, so on. And as we all know, Primarchs learn incredibly fast. He picked it all up really quick. Mm -hmm, Classic, mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, he's a Primarch. We get it. Uh, he rose really quick through the ranks. And, of course, he was a fierce, fierce warrior. And that is actually him you see right there. As, Whoa! Uh, yeah, as Grand Master of the Order. Whoa, that armor is so dope! That's so much cooler than all the armor I've ever seen him in. Because usually it's just like that that other picture Shy posted with like the 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 white kind of robe with the with the green trim and everything. And it's like, the oh, that's fine, that's that's cool. But that shit, that's like barbarian armor, and I, ooh, that's so much better. I mean, his new armor, his armor, is, his chest is a lion. It's a lion face. Why would? He, but he is the lion. Exactly. It's oh, I, oh man, I really like that. Damn it. All right, well, well, he doesn't get to keep it, so it sucks. It's bullshit. So, leading to the greatest heights, he eventually, him and Luther, called upon this grand crusade, the extermination of the great beasts of Caliban, so that this people may live in <laughs> peace and without fear. Okay. And this <laughs> took, this was 10 years of this crusade. Each victory against the beast brought in new recruits, as they put each beast's head on a pike plated around the walls of their fortress, and warriors of the order started to care a hell of a lot more about or a hell of a lot more than just survival. They they had a reason to fight, and this was great, but did come with a bit of a price, which was the Caliban knights had a very harsh code of conduct, code of honor. Mm -hmm. And now all the, the aristocracy, the, the knights' ranks were being swelled with kind of regular folk. Mm -hmm. And they, they weren't really happy about that. Now, they wouldn't really speak out against the lion, but the traditions of Caliban were kind of being disseminated. Right. And this kind of weighed a bit hard on Luther. Luther was his, his brother, his protege. Not really a father of their figure, but more of an equal. And Luther was the greatest man in all of Caliban. And oh. he was their strongest champion, one of their best scholars, just the best of everyone. <laughs> and now all he does is play second fiddle to the lion. You know, I'm getting a whole lot of red flags right about now. This is just... <clears throat> red flag after red flag after red flag. Luther is dying and or betraying the lion, isn't he? I don't <clears throat> skip to the fun part now, do we? <laughs> no, no, no. Go, go, please, please. I'll put down my red flags that I am waving on mass like an air traffic controller, and we'll, we'll get to it. But the thing about the lion is that often he would help lead these crusades himself. He was always in battle, always unafraid to speak his mind. He, he's like an unwavering gaze, whereas someone like Dorn, because the hardest part is like when you say quiet and brooding, you, don't, you think of Dorn often, right? Yeah. But Dorn is, is blunt and a bit more simple in his stuff. Mm -hmm. The lion is like, he kind of sits there surveying everything like an apex predator. He acts oh. like a top predator the whole time he's always has like eyes darting around or looking like dead into your soul just kind of right. weighing everything up and he just won't speak so he's just sort of methodically planning and not really brooding or anything he's just always <clears throat> he's always on the ready he's always on the ready the line <laughs> is doom guy ah okay the lion is basically Doom Guy. I do not know who I am. I do not know where I am. All I know is I must kill. The lion is a, a feral apex predator taught to live as a man. And underneath Oof. all of that armor <laughs> and underneath all of that, of that beautiful hair is a, a feral murderer. He oh. is 
all about killing. So he's so like when he broods, he's more like a a, a snake just waiting to strike. Like it's kind of coiling and it's just ready to just without mercy, without fear. There was a, a, a knight order called the Knights of, oh, I'm trying to remember their name, Lupus. And they rebelled against the new order that the lion was going with. They even mm-hmm. started training some of the beasts to use against him. And with this, he hunted them down to every last man. Every <laughs> single person, they entered the, uh, the castle, killed the beasts, and went through the castle into every chamber, into every lock, into every hidden passage, and slaughtered every single one of them. He well, would hear of none of this. <laughs> I mean, that lion is efficient, if nothing else. That is, he's, you know, like, ooh, boy. L- lion's job is to kill. Yeah, so you really don't want to be on the lion's bad side. Because you're, well, you're probably not going to be there for long, it sounds the, like. <laughs> ten years of crusading against these beasts. Ten years of fighting. The order became so powerful, they had their final full crusade as it was long and bloody. Hundreds of men dead for each monster of uh, nest of monsters put to the torch. And many grew super tired of the endless slaughter, except for the lion. <laughs> Mercy has no place in war. To leave the task unfinished with any foe alive would be to waste the lives spent in pursuit. The end, the only end allowed is total annihilation by any means necessary. They would ambush where the beast came to feed, <sighs> poison the pools where they drank, set ablaze the forest to have them run. Anyone wow. who was frightened by the power and skill of the lion or went against his order were killed to the last man. Okay, so, so the lion is Captain Genocide. He's actually really good at the genocide, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. really good at it. I, I was going to say, that sounds like a, a, he just kills to the last person uh, regardless. It's, he, he's Captain Genocide. His, his forte is just genocidal death cult. So there's an interesting discussion between the, the lion Russ, right? Mm-hmm. Russ was often referred to as, was he referred to the emperor's executioner? Oh, you're the yeah. one that knows all the lore. <laughs> I don't know all the all the lore. I'm actually I'm actually Does a bit anybody. Uh, I'm actually a little bit behind on my on my Rust lore, but um I think they were called the Emperor's Executioners, but they they felt like often sometimes more of like a big threat. It's okay. like you point to Lehman Russ over here and he's the gigantic wolf snarling his fucking teeth. <laughs> and like don't screw with me or or this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. But the the lion is who you send when you want nobody to return. <laughs> like the Damn. lion, the lion is the is if the um the r- wolves are the executioners, the lion is the exterminator. Whew. All right, all right, lion. All right, so the lion is indeed just a savage. Well, I don't wanna, I don't know if savage is the right word, but well, he's, he's he likes his job. Yes, but he takes in a lot of the aspects of of old knights. Um, the difference is that he was one of those people who never much liked fanfare or accolades or any of the fanciness of it. Um, okay. He yeah. has a lot of pride. The issue is that sometimes it's like, oh, the lion doesn't care about frivolous things like pride and, and, and um, glory. But he's also like a knight, so he kind of does sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of depends on how he's written, I think. Yeah, I was going to um, say if you're if you're dark angels and your whole uh motif is a lot of medieval knights, then I mean to some degree you're going to care about accolades and titles and stuff like that. Sometimes he cares less about the actual fanciness of it. I think he cares more about the the actions of what he does. Yeah. When definitely. when Horus became war master, I don't believe he even showed up. <laughs> He was like, I'm too busy. And then he destroyed another world. Yeah, I'm too busy genociding another planet, please. Would you like to read this quote here? 
Uh, sure. Shai put a quote in the chat. Uh, it says, he would be the cold and inevitable destroyer. The doom that one once unleashed could not be recalled, subverted, or delayed. Taught by the black depths of the forest of Caliban, the value of cold, ruthless tenacity. Lionel Johnson was the first of all the Primarchs. War distilled into its rawest and most fundamental essence. Death! that walked like a man. The galaxy would be forever changed by his return. Oof. The boy, I like, yo. I like to think that the lion is often a lot like, the, the most like the emperor, in my opinion. Mm. I, I think that of any, of any Primarch, the one who is the closest to the emperor is the lion. Extremely cold, extremely methodical, the ends will always justify the means, no, ma- no matter how disgusting and savage those uh, means might be. Yeah, no matter the cost, the ends always justify the means. Yeah, that's... Oh, boy, I, I did not realize how... Um, I don't know if I want to say Im- Im- important Lion is, or, or how much his returning is like, whoa, that's a big deal, because he is like, he is scorched earth. So with that, I want you to take a look at his his new mini and see if you kind of get it. <laughs> see if I kind of get I mean, yeah, I've seen his new mini. It is very dope uh, as he's uh, walking along a skeleton. Yeah. I think it's a fallen piece of tapestry, but like, oh, you, you, you think of you think of the lion now, his duty as the the exterminator the end uh, of a planet and, and the actual like no will there will be no rest until every enemy of humanity is dead and to enjoy <laughs> accolades and fanfare and titles and medals before them is a waste of time and you see him look like a dark souls boss right that with oh that absolutely face, yeah 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 that determination like Gilliman is here. I'm on. I'm here to like lead a group. And the line is, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I mean, he, Lion, he's waking up and uh, he has plenty to do because there are enemies of humanity everywhere. It is just, I mean, it's going to be an all you can eat buffet for, for Mr. Lion, for Mr. L. Johnson. There's a great quote by him that goes, The measure of true glory is not to give battle in the bright noon of war, surrounded by brave comrades upon the field of victory, but to valiantly fight on alone in the darkness, with no hope of aid or even remembrance, and to spit defiance in midnight's eye. Wow, what a badass. He's an interesting, he's certainly an interesting guy. To yeah. him, honor and glory comes from the the amount of races he's genocided. Apparently. Yeah, ah, boy, that's uh, yeah, he's uh, that's oh boy, he's Though, he's. I would not want to. I would not want to see Lionel Johnson coming at me as an opponent, though. Like that's, I don't want any part of that. I would run as far as I could. It probably wouldn't even matter because he's Captain Genocide. He'd find me wherever I went. That's that's kind of the vibe is that the lion is the the point at a problem and have it be done. He, he's <laughs> he's the the end all be all. It's like Oof. all right, once he's there, it's like just just you, you might as well give up. And even if you do give up, it doesn't matter because he'll kill you anyway. Yeah, he'll find you and and oof, he he went down every hidden passage in that castle and killed everything. And then when he returned after doing that. Heaps and heaps of praise was thrown upon him by the members of the order. Oh, I'm sure he loved that. <laughs> well, the particular Luther was very happy with him, but competed with him often for honor and victory as equals. Mm-hmm. Now, he had eclipsed him so far past. He rules all of Caliban. And while Luther is, is happy for him, he's got a twinge of jealousy. Luther was the greatest man Caliban would have ever seen, and he was born in the same time as the lion. Oh, man. That is unfortunate. The greatest man on the planet, 
that's not a Primarch. So after this came the arrival of the Emperor. He brought in 500 mem- uh, members of the Astartes down from his spacecraft. Uh, the Lion dueled the first captain of these and found his, uh, his entire, mm, I guess, Astartes Legion to mm-hmm. be respect, took their measure, gained respect. And okay. they, if you don't tell, they have kind of a black power armor in the pre-heresy photos you know i'm actually not sure i've seen too many pre-heresy dark angels pictures i've seen the post-heresy ones where they got like the flowing white robes and everything and it's kind of green pre-heresy has like a bit of a black color often it's described as a a green so dark it's mistaken as black um but it's basically black and red that's kind of cool, actually. A green so dark that's mistaken for black. I like that. Yeah. And so, um, based on old Calibanite myth, it was, and the angels of darkness descended on pinions of fire and light, the great and terrible dark angels. An old fable. Ooh. Hence the name, the dark angels. The dark angels. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. That's a, mm, that's a, that's a hell of a descriptor. That's a hell of a way to describe your uh, faction. So with this came the slow degradation of the Knights of Caliban and Caliban in its own right. Um, There was a lot of indecision among the ranks, but at this point, Space Marines were not individual knights. They were not houses and and, and all that stuff. They were unity, full unity as brothers. So all of the Knights of Caliban had to be disseminated under one banner. Mm Mm-hmm breaking away the tradition that they had. Yeah. Caliban itself was also in need of recruits for the Imperial Army. And within an unimaginable amount of time, like super quickly, the entire forest world of Caliban was retrofitted into factories and production mines, from a lush green world of castles to refineries, mines, and workshops. Oh, that's unfortunate. It is. That sucks. Well, I mean... It was a death world, so, you know, if if some world has to be, you know, torn down and turned into an industrial war zone, eh, there's worse, you know. Now it's at least not a death jungle. It is not a death world anymore in that sense. Mm-hmm. That's um, good. Air but quotes. <clears throat> good in that sense, but he had already exterminated most of the beasts anyway, so. That's true. They were genociding the beasts left and right, so, it, yeah. yeah. So... Then began the process to create Astartes. Gene seed for some, but some who were a little bit too old would not be able to get the gene seed and were needed to be modified, uh, biology, grafting, all kinds of uh, invasive surgeries like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they did the same thing to Corferon, um, uh, Lorgar's abusive father. Oh, fuck him. Yeah, he's the worst. Uh, Luther also got this treatment of being kind of buffed up in that way, but Mm -hmm. not at the height of an Astartes. So now Luther is surrounded by men that were his squires and lower level knights, now far stronger than he could ever be because they Uh, were full Astartes now. I was going to say that has just got to add a that's that's got to be such a bitter pill for him to swallow because he was already getting jealous of um, the lion. And then it's like, oh, by the way, not only are you not as strong as the lion, now you're not as strong as the squires and the people that you used to dominate. And ooh, that's got to be just a knife twisting in his side and just ugh. It keeps it keeps building. Uh, it just doesn't get better for old Luther, does it? So other Primarchs often saw the lion as dour, always in a dark mood, and <laughs> couldn't care at all about the opinions of others. But to wow, him, they thought Captain Genocide was dour, huh? No way. I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that he's Captain Genocide. He is absolutely Captain Genocide. I mean, look at that! Look at that face! Look at that jawline! Like you, you, you can see it. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, But to him, the war against monsters did not end on Caliban. His job was simple. To (laughs) kill. The enemies of humanity (laughs) must die. Yep. I mean, 
<laughs> like we said, what else? To, what else would you use him for? Like, we we've we've dubbed him Captain Genocide. What else are you gonna have him do? Point him at a problem and solve it. You know, I've always told you that the lion is kind of an asshole. Kinda, uh, yes, you, you're yes. kind of getting it now a little bit. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely getting it now. Yeah, I who e good. Gr- yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. and, and mm-hmm. you understand why he was also like, oh no, Kurz is on your homeworld, Gilliman. I'm gonna nuke it. <laughs> you what? I I totally get that now. That is so on brand for the lion. It is just yeah. I I I totally understand now. Um. So. He took out and grabbed his sons and brought them into the fold to bring in his entire Dark Angels together because they were out fighting other wars and stuff. Yeah. And in a few short years, he gathered like 100,000 warriors and led Ooh. them to this stronghold on uh, Grammire, I think is what it's called, basically where they all originally convened. Mm-hmm. And with that, he dueled with the champions of the Councils of the Masters. And after the final duel an hour-long duel he accepted the title of grandmaster of the first legion the six wings of hexagrammaton and the high preceptor of the order militant the idea is that he wanted to consolidate every single major position in the legion to then consolidate it under a single banner and assimilate it okay um the wings of the hexagrammaton is something we'll talk about in the dark angels dedicated episode Mm. But you'll often hear about things called the Raven Wing and the Death Wing. There are six wings of his warfare, basically. Oh, okay. Aren't so, don't, uh, biblically accurate angels have six wings? If that's true, then wow, that that's that's something I never thought of. Yeah, sure. Uh, I ooh, I might be wrong. I might just be thinking of some dumb thing I saw in an anime or something once. So don't quote me on that. Well, if you're going to kill God, anime is the way to do it. <laughs> JRPGs are the way to do it. If you want to kill God, you go play yourself some, like, Xenogears or something, because mm, you are on a trip. But uh, the different wings, like Raven Wing, are black, uh, armored, really fast speeders and jet bikes. The Death Wing are bone-colored, like the inner circle, the ones that know the most. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. So, Chai, was I right? Is that that's a picture of a biblically accurate angel? The sort of nightmare fuel of eyes and burning circles. Yeah, he's got six wings. I was oh, I was right. He was right. Oh my god. It does happen. So he swore an oath. We are the angels of darkness. For us there is no peace, no end but war and death. We shall not walk in the golden halls of mankind's future, but stand resolute in the shadows beyond. While we yet draw breath, this Imperium will not fall and we will not know defeat. For I pledge every warrior, every drop of blood in the Legion, in the name of victory, no matter the cost. Wow. <laughs> That's, man, the Dark Angels are so extra. In a in a good way, but wow, they are so and they just woof. I would not. Now I'm just like man, like it, it's never great when you have to face off against like space marines. But I'm just like man, I would really not want to face off against the dark angels. No part of me would want to see the dark angels coming at me in like a, a, a war scenario. It it just seems like the worst. There like was you are, a, you're dead. Yeah, he he was. Oh, it's um, he's got this definite kind of thing where the dark angels are supposed to be like the pure ones for the emperor, like pure of cause, pure of mind, mm. always always there and and fiercely loyal. They which is why they're the ones you can call behind or call on in the back and and often have that weird kind of kgb vibe to them Mm -hmm. um see there's an interesting thing about the lion there's a book excerpt that says he was always being guarded with his humors those few who knew him took it as a uh like mistakenly believed it to be like that of his character brother dorn but that was to mistake circumspection for obduracy and aloofness for indifference 
He demanded much and gave but little. Yet in his hearts, he loved all of his sons as both a lord and a father. His Aww. pride in their deeds was surpassed only by the demand he placed on those deeds being exceeded. He, he had overseen the extermination of countless billions. Such was his oh. duty, his special <laughs> place within the pantheon of warlike avatars who served their father's ambitions. And though he took no joy from it, nor did he question its justice. His brothers thought him unquestionably ruthless, and they were right. They believed that he would expend any resource, even the lives of his own sons, to prosecute the Imperium's wars, and they were right. They said that he had not <laughs> shed a single tear at such losses, even at the annihilation of the Rongda had seen his legion's strength struck in half. And again, they were right. They thought these <laughs> as criticisms. Oof. But they were not. They were not. <laughs> Oof. Uh, uh, during that whole thing, I was just like, man, Corn would love the lion. I don't know. I think he's a little too secretive for that. Maybe. Maybe. He's, he's certainly... Uh, also, yeah, I, don't, I believe he doesn't take any joy in the murder. It's, it's more the... the oh, okay. See, yeah, he's I, not like angry on having fun. Got you, got you, got you. That's that's fair. That's fair. So, with the rest of this comes a couple of key moments. There's a, like I said, a million battles in the heresy and the like. But the one that's the most important I want to discuss is Sarash. So, okay. Sarash was a major fight during the Great Crusade that had them dealing with a very specific group of secretly chaos worshiping people called the Saroshi. Um, they were originally going to be Imperial compliant, but ended up realizing that the Imperium wanted to be atheist. And they <laughs> believe that to be an expression of pure evil and their anti-religious stance to be terrible. Yet without knowing, they were actually worshiping chaos gods. They met with the lion, their leader, and the, they renounced the lion and said, you are terrible and, and awful. And the emperor is a creature of falsehood. In which naturally the lion <laughs> took the man and was like, "Enjoy being in multiple pieces." And, I was gonna say, him. of all the people, like he, th that guy knows who the lion is too, right? Like they're not unaware of what the lion does and what the dark angels do, right? How in God's name would you say that to what? What did you think was gonna happen? It was more. It He's was more of a. Genocide. It was more of a like spin in your face kind of reason. I think he knew what was going to happen to him. Oh, he he knew he okay. He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to get cut into like eighty seven billion pieces. And okay, he assumed so. I probably yeah. <laughs> I, he, okay. he was on the he was on the Lions flagship. Oh, okay. Um, not to mention. Oh yeah, that's right. Did you, did you know the, the Lions flagship is called the Invincible Reason. <laughs> Very fitting. Very, mm -hmm. very fitting. Uh-huh. Okay. So what was interesting is that Luther and another librarian were in the embarkation deck, and Luther decided to investigate the shuttle that he came in on. And okay. when he came back from the shuttle, his face was white, and he told the librarian and everyone else to leave. Uh-oh. And eventually, upon more investigation, the second uh, the librarian guy came back and poked his line that was terribly wrong. And Luther had found out that inside it was actually an atomic weapon, like a nuke. Oh, that's no good. And so the Soroshi were intent on assassinating the entire Dark Angels hierarchy, including the Primarch. Oh. And the librarian was asking why the hell did he not tell of this earlier? And Luther was thinking to himself, I could just say nothing. I could, oh. I, could, I could just leave. And if I just left, it would be me at the head. Yep. Oh, no. So Luther was trying to betray. He was just going to, whatever, I'll just leave it. Let him, let him die. Let him get nuked. Oh, man. Luther. Well, he, cha he changed his mind. He he, oh, was, right, ha right. he had these thoughts in his head, and he was like, "Oh God, no, 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 no! This is wait, what? What am I doing? What am I thinking? Like th this is not worth any of this." And so eventually, he came around and jettisoned the nuke into space. Oh, okay, but the cracks are forming in the armor. 
The cracks and, are forming. Yep. He was thinking about it. The cracks are forming heavily. He was uh, considering it, had his hand over the trigger, and just kind of said, no, this isn't who I am. This, this is wrong. <laughs> it's not who you are yet. And uh, in response, so this is one part I wasn't quite sure about. If the lion found out about this and the next action he had was in response, Ooh. or if uh-huh. this was just the next thing he did in general, which added to the problem. I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not sure which one it is. But after that, Luther and a large contingent of Astartes were sent back to Caliban to oversee recruitment of new Astartes. Uh, okay. That the, they were in dire need of new recruits and experienced warriors were needed to speed up the training process. Okay, okay. What this in reality was, was basically exile. I, I was going to say, it's kind of like uh, maybe the lion either knew about what happened, had his own little suspicions, and he was like, I need, I need to get Luther as far away from me as possible. Like I need to get him away from, like important ship and me because i don't trust this i don't trust this guy like he's 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 showing some cracks and it didn't make much sense too because if the dark angels so badly needed warriors why are they taking warriors off the front line training people is for seers and and elderly warriors you know yeah you don't take one of your uh, top lieutenant, she'd be like, "Oh yeah, go 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 back home and and train soldiers." It's like that's that seems like a waste, right? Uh, pretty much, and so that's why the intentions of it became kind of clear. Mm-hmm. So this began a brooding distrust and hatred from Luther and the people who had been sent out into exile, just yeah, in really. time for a certain heresy by a man named Horus. Ha uh-huh. ha, okay. Okay, Luther. All right, all right. So the main thing, the gambit that Horus had to play was the fact that the Dark Angels and the Lion in particular would never be swayed. Oh, no. He, he was not going. No way, no how. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Probably not. But so, Luther. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing with the Luther thing. Oh, okay. It was more just, okay, the Dark Angels are enormous. They yeah. have a gigantic overall uh, contingency of, of, un- of people. Um, so Lorgar, you and Angron are going to beat the shit out of Gilliman mm-hmm. and, and go, do, go to Kalth and do all these kinds of stuff. And I'm going to send the Lion to the fringes of space to do campaigns <laughs> far away from everything. Good call. Good call, Horace. That's that's smart. Smart. And um, and then at that point is somewhere around the time when Horace eventually revealed himself as traitor, along with the Death Guard, World Eaters, um, Word Bearers. Yeah, I, I forget right. the uh, <clears throat> it was a certain amount. And then there was the ones that revealed themselves as traitor on Isfahan. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so humorously during this big fight way back out there, he actually met with Percherabo to discuss about the traitorous issues going on. <laughs> yeah. And during this fight dealing with some of the uh, people in the fringes of space, he had actually lion had gained a bunch of siege weaponry. Okay. Uh, from the whole thing. And they were discussing deliberations of what's the most important uh, type of thing. And they had a discussion and it goes, Excellent, Johnson said. In that case, they, they made like an agreement. In that case, you're welcome to take possession of the Ordinus siege guns at your convenience. On one condition, of course. The Primarch raised a thin eyebrow. Oh? And Johnson gave his guest a sly grin. You must promise me they'll be put to good use on Isvan. <laughs> Percherabo, Primarch of the Iron Warriors, smiled, his eyes gleaming like polished <laughs> iron. Oh yes, he said. Of that, you may be assured. Nice. <laughs> very, very on brand for like, I like that. That is, that is a, that is a funny, it's, obviously it's, it's, it's it, it fits the character and it's actually pretty hilarious. Yeah. It's uh cause it's five ma- drop site massacre was the attempt to destroy Horus. 
Yeah. And of course, that's when they turn, they realize they turn traitor and destroy so many of the legions. And so stop shooting, says the, uh, <laughs> says the word bearers. You're hitting our troops. Lord. No, I don't think I will. Have faith, word bearer. <laughs> We're all bleeding today. <laughs> Click. Boom. Gotta love the Iron Warriors. Mm-hmm. Love them. So we talked a bit about this in prior Primarch episodes. After this, uh, the Lion, Gilliman, and Sanguinius are kind of cut off from the wider Imperium due to the Ruin Storm created by Erebus and Lorgar, the giant warp storm blocking travel. Mm-hmm. They create a Imperial Secundus, a secondary Imperium at the time, with Sanguinius as acting emperor. Mm-hmm. And during this time, the Dark Angels absolutely body the Night Lords. <laughs> Just <laughs> slaughter them wholesale. Because if there's one thing Night Lords are good at, it's losing. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, to be fair, though, it sounds like against the Dark Angels, not too many people would have a chance. Like, that sounds like one of those factions where, like, if if you're if you're trying to 1v1 them, it's not really a 1v1, uh, you're probably going to get bodied. It doesn't matter if you're a Night Lord or uh, maybe the Ultramarines just because, you know, they always have to win, but... Yeah. Yeah, but the, the Thramus Crusade was the thing, and, and the Night Lords got just annihilated by the Dark Angels, <laughs> as they were also mainly there to try to stop um, stop the Lion, you yeah. know, from, from dealing with everything. Mm-hmm. The two of them actually, Kurz and the Lion tried to parlay a little bit to discuss what's going on and everything, and um, <laughs> the Night uh, Kurz almost kills him, shockingly wow, enough. Wow, Really? Mm-hmm. He almost strangles him to death. Whoa. Uh, okay. During their fight, which, I mean, the man can see the future, so that certainly gives him Helps. a bit of a, a, a bit of a tactical advantage. Yeah, a bit of an edge, sure. That's fair, yeah. Um, so as he was about to kill him with that, a Dark Angel's Honor Guardsman rammed his sword through Kurz's back um, to get Ooh. him off of him. Mm, Should have seen that coming, Kurz. Should have, but he was, he was, you know, he's also crazy. <laughs> he um, is, that is true, he is out of his mind, batshit insane, yep. And so for the next three months came a point where after Kurz was healed, him, Sevatar, and his Atramentar Terminators boarded the Invincible Reason, which, and started slaughtering the Dark Angels, resulting in the death of all but only 12 of the Terminators Ca- uh, Sevatar being ca- uh, of the Night Lords Terminators, that is, because mm-hmm. again they're great at losing. Yeah, um, yeah. Sevatar being captured and imprisoned, and Kurz fleeing Lionel Johnson and playing Among Us for the next multiple months. Mm. Oh, oh, that's when the Among Us game starts. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, he pl- he was evading uh, the Lion on his own flagship for months, wreaking terror <laughs> in the vents. <laughs> and attacking the mortal crew. He's venting. He was. He's he um, he eventually escaped with Sevatar and the various other Night Lords and made his way down to uh, Makrag, if I'm not mistaken. And then that's where the, oh my god, I'm going to nuke the nuke curse. <laughs> like, please don't. <laughs> nah, just let me do it. It's fine. I, I've genocided smaller planets. Don't worry about it. And so then you had the trial of Comrade Kurz, which we talked about in the Sanguinius episode a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, That whole shtick, you know, he gets exiled from the Imperial Secundus because of this whole thing. He comes back and he's like, wait, don't kill Kurz, because if Kurz is alive, then that means, and he says that the Emperor sent an assassin to kill him, and that means the Emperor's still alive. And Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know... All lots of 40 million books written on this stuff, but the <laughs> important stuff arrives after this, which is mm-hmm. the lion arrives at the Siege of Terra too late. The emperor has been mortally wounded and placed on the golden throne. Mm. Uh, Horus is dead. Sanguinius is dead. The traitors are being routed, etc. So on. Yep. And Lionel Johnson then completely racked with grief at his inability to prevent the fall of the Emperor, returns to Caliban, and is immediately bombarded from the surface. <laughs> Jeez. Alrighty. Oh, no. Poor, poor Lion. 
I mean, because seeing what happened on Terra has got to be just the biggest disappointing failure of his life. It's everything he stands for, he failed to do. And then he comes back and just, oh, no. Oh. It was also a very unglorious way. He wasn't able to get there because he failed in battle. He wasn't able mm-hmm. to get there because he was delayed, kept at bay, and then cut off by a giant warp storm. There's, yeah. there's no, no justice in losing because you couldn't even make it to the finish line. Yeah. It's really demoralizing for someone like him. Yeah, he got a DNF in that race. That's unfortunate. So when he had returned to Caliban and the planet's orbital defenses started firing upon him, he had found out that Luther with the council had decided to go along with Horus to betray the Imperium and secede from the Emperor and the Lion, all the while under the corruption of chaos. Yeah, that's that's what I was afraid of. Oh no. Chaos corrupted Luther. Yeah, which which uh was there a I, specific chaos or is it just chaos in general corrupted undivided. him because just un- okay. Yeah. Uh with yeah. that you know furious with this the lion then began bombarding Caliban from orbit blowing <laughs> the damn place to smithereens and arriving down to fight Luther while still bombarding the planet mind you. <laughs> Um, so he went down to the where, planet. Just not where he's at. Not where okay. he's at. <laughs> I was like, wow. That is, he takes his genocide very seriously. <laughs> Luther now was a chaos champion, fully elevated to the strength of a Primarch through the gifts of the chaos gods, much Ooh. like Horus. Yeah. I mean, um, smart move by or, chaos because, you know, you if you if you pump him up with chaos juice, there's a chance you get rid of the lion. It is, and then they have a final massive battle. Luther and the Lion had their their final duel. Caliban was under siege and fire with the planet heaving and cracking. And the duel ended with Luther launching, with the power of all of his chaos juice, a massive uh, psychic attack that mortally wounded Lionel Johnson and pretty much knocked him out. Ooh. Right after that, he had lost the grip that Chaos had on his body. And oh, no. Luther just started going completely mad, unwilling to fight anymore, mad ramblings, confusion, all this kind of stuff. And the powers of Chaos that had buffed him were furious that once again, another <laughs> one of their pawns had failed to kill the Emperor's Chosen. The the idea is that the veil of deceit had been removed from his eyes. Um, And the enraged chaos gods then sent a warp storm over to this planet that was already heaving (laughs) under the strain in which then it cracked and broke and shattered into itty bitty little pieces with the monastery the order was in and he was on breaking apart into a giant chunk and all of the heretical dark angels that had joined Luther, including the lion himself, were sucked into the warp. Oh, boy, that's no good. Shortly that's... afterwards, they were, uh, the lion was spit back out of the warp in a complete <laughs> coma. The, the warp just spit him back out? Yeah, it had like a hairball, you know? Like, look, at that, look at that hair he's got, you know? He's a lion. <laughs> He's in his little coma, a sleepity sleep, and he's grabbed by the various members of the Dark Angels who now have their floating fortress known as the Rock, the The piece of Caliban that was detached during the destruction of the planet Mm -hmm. and now serves as their moving base, which we had as our main spot in the Bash Store book. Mm -hmm. Which actually turns out pretty good for them because it's, it's real hard to find. Until, it is. You know, until Vashtor makes a, makes a MacGuffin that can find it. Well, yeah, Vashtor's whole thing is MacGuffins. <laughs> it kind of is, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so all of those dark angels that were grabbed and thrown into the warp were then spit out in tons of various places throughout the galaxy. And these will be known as the Fallen. Oh, okay. And so, gotcha. Finding I've... the Fallen is the Dark Angel's number one goal <laughs> currently. Find those filthy traitors. Mm-hmm, because no one's allowed to know the shame of the, any part of their legion turning chaos. These are the Dark Angels. These are the Emperor's executioners. Mm-hmm. Right? Or exterminators, sorry. Um, that is a massive point of shame. And so the Dark Angels, if you've heard plenty of memes about them being traitors or I being, have indeed. I, I get it yep. now. I that, well, anytime the Dark Angels are brought up, it's like, oh, the fallen, oh, the fallen. I I never turn traitor. We're loyal. We're the good ones. Yeah. I even yeah. I've heard those memes. Yeah. Because they're they're not traitor, but they don't want anyone to know that they ever had anyone fall. Yeah. And yeah. so the lengths they go to keep that a secret, the things they do, the people they kill, <laughs> the the torture they inflict, mm. all to keep that lie away and to find any of the fallen is massive. It's paramount. Mm. That is the number one goal of the Dark Angels. Oh, that's, I always like that comic right there. <laughs> Yeah, brother, I have fallen. Might you assist me up, Bro- bro- brother? Bro- brother, brother, no, I just, I just tripped. So <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah, with that, way down deep in the rock lies a stasis cell. In this cell, combined with uh, fuck meters of thick rock creep, warding runes and everything, lies. Luther, the arch traitor, currently a babbling, crazed mess. Oh, yeah. Luther survived all this. Luther's alive. Oh, I did not know that. And he's he's he and he's he's in this little prison, and he's just in there, just babbling his brains out nonsensically. Yes, he is down there, deep in the in the bowels of the rock, kept in in this field, and often. Only ever seen by two people, the Watchers in the Dark, or the group of the Watchers in the Dark, yeah, and the Supreme Grand Master of the Dark Angels, which at this point would be Azrael, um, because he has a sword called the Sword of Secrets, which is a special relic that is used to access the cell. They go in there okay. sometimes to get information from him, where the Fallen might be in his traitorous ramblings. <laughs> and, and well, how would he, he know where the fallen are? Like he it's, does he, he doesn't he doesn't have like a direct link with them. I mean, I don't know. He's chaos. He was chaos corrupted. Who knows? Eh. Um, but point being is that he would often have just these deluded, frightening ramblings, specifically about how the lion is coming back. The lion will return. The lion will wake up, and he will absolve me of my sins. Oh. He will be back and he will save me. But oh, man, I kind of feel bad for Luther. L- Luther's betrayal was one of the less um, selfishly awful ones compared to like Typhus, for example. Yeah. Well, just because Luther had just it seems like the whole time he just kind of. He's getting these little pinpricks over and over again. He's like, oh, I'm kind of jealous of the lion. And it's like, oh, well, that sucks. And But I'll still be loyal to the lion. It's like, oh, I could nuke the lion, but I'm not going to do it because, oh, no, I'm better than that. Then he gets he gets sent away, and it's like, oh, by the way, all these space marines are stronger than you now, and you still can't add up to... And then he and chaos, and now he's just a babbling man. I feel bad for Luther. Is that like... Is is that a hot take to feel like sympathy for Luther? Um, it depends. If Dark Angel players want to be very Dark Angel-y, they'll be like, "How dare you!" <laughs> On the other hand, um, you know, as far as like reasons to betray went, Luther's wasn't the worst. Yeah, um, the Lion is not what I would call the most likable guy, especially <laughs> not when. Like, you are playing second fiddle to him the whole time. He's getting all these accolades, and he doesn't even give a shit. Yeah. 
and he probably doesn't really... He's probably not one for showering you with praise either, I would assume. No, no, he would, he does not care. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but, uh, yes, he, you know, the veil of deceit removing from his face, he was very upset. Much, much like that moment of clarity that Horace apparently had before he died. Oh, um, gotcha. It's kind of the, uh, uh, the assumption, but he, it's, at this point, he's a babbling mess. But yeah. the rock was sieged far before Vashtor arrived. And oh. despite the fact that this rock with a demon prince at its head sieged their uh, their overall you know place, they left just as swiftly as they had arrived, not realizing that the attack was most likely a diversion. As Azrael went back down to the stasis pods and oh. found that Luther was missing. He's gone. Oh no! Luther is out there somewhere. So at that point, the lion. Being being put to put to nap time by Luther's attack and the warp shenanigans, sleeps on the rock, mm-hmm. deep down below the area of of all the stuff, etc. And well, we know he's awake now. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He's uh, and gotten a bit of a bit yeah. older in his time. Yeah, he he's got a bitchin' mustache now. Who's Whew. that person? Everyone says he looks like. Is it someone from Game of Thrones? There's not really anyone from Game of Thrones that he looks like. I don't remember. But though he does have the Emperor's Shield, indeed. He does? Yes, the Emperor's Shield. Oh, cool. I'm assuming that gives some absolutely ridiculous amount of protection. Oh, no, he looks like, um... It doesn't. Oh, the the oldest Lannister. Um, he gets he gets shot with an arrow while he's on the shitter by a, uh, um... Oh, I can't remember his name. Ah, whatever. Not, yeah. not important. Anyway, yeah, not point, important. Point being is that uh, yes, it, he looks very, very. He looks very cool. He's a bit older. It's uh, interesting to see where where it's all gonna go. Yeah. He's, uh, oh, there's another picture of him. I just I just found. Hey, well, look at that. Hey, he yo. looks he looks good. I like the other one better. I like his mini better. Something about his face in that one I do not like. Like, the armor looks great, sword great. Something about the face, don't like it. And whatever. Point being is that there's more art, and that's all I care about. Oh, yeah, sure. More art's always good. Yeah. It's just nice to see him up and about. (laughs) And, uh, you know, that's... That right there is good old, um... The Lion. The Lion. Captain Genocide strikes again. Captain Genocide strikes again. I like in that artwork how... Just blindingly brilliant his sword is. Mm-hmm. Man. He's got some great head options, too, yeah. Whoa, those are such cool head options. Also, man, wings. Good <laughs> Holy... <laughs> those are some wings on his helmet. Mm-hmm. Wow. I like the hooded without, like, the, the where he's got the hood, but you can see his face. And he looks very sort of like, oh, I did just wake up. I'm very mysterious. And yeah, yeah he's, very cool. he's got quite the vibe. Oh, hell yeah. I, uh, oh, I, I think he's, yeah, he's darn cool. The, that's that for the most part is understanding the lion and what he's all about. <laughs> I have a much better understanding of the lion. And now I have a much better understanding of the Dark Angels memes and uh, yeah, I, I now I totally get why he was like, oh yeah, Kurz is down there, just nuke it, just just it, doesn't it's matter who to, else is down there, just, just kill it's it, hard kill to tell it. Tarzan to use subtlety. <laughs> yeah. Tarzan, please use your brain. He he just wants to unga bunga. He just wants that unga bunga DPS, man. He just wants to murder. <laughs> is that a oh is that a picture of uh? Angron fighting the lion? Yeah. That's Ooh. uh that's Which is probably coming, coming up. up, right? Yeah. I can't wait to see Angron, an excellent character, absolutely get destroyed by him <laughs> because the because Angron can come back every 8 days and the lion he responds, can't. Yeah. And and like with lion just waking up, you have to make uh you have to make the lion look like a god. He has to look so just 
unstoppably invincible that yeah angron is about to get absolutely destroyed it wouldn't surprise me if they put him on a two times x uh respawn time because of how badly he's about to get bodied yeah that's <sighs> that's the unfortunate part is that yeah. and you can't kill of, vastor is... yet like you can't have line just go up and be like hey vastor <laughs> it's well, you can't he's, kill Vashtor in general. He's well, a in general, demon sure. thing. Yeah, but like you can't just have Vashtor already be clowned on. And it's just, yeah. 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 I, it's going to be interesting if, if he, when he comes back and tries to kill Angron, and then like, oh, well, damn it. <laughs> I mean, he'll have a lot of fun waiting for the respawn timer. I, Lion seems like the type that would uh, spawn camp Angron just for the hell of it. Spawn? How exactly do you spawn Camp Angron? He he he's gonna he kill him a few times. Like, oh, where does he spawn? And he's just like triangulating where Angron's gonna spawn. He's like, aha, there! And he just spawn camps and just waits two weeks, kills him oh. again. Just oh god damn it! That's that. Hell yeah! The that lion, was fun. The lion is there. That the I have tried my best to explain the lion. There, there aren't a whole lot of the lion moments. There aren't all. Uh, well, I mean, there are plenty, but like not this episode. It's just to yeah. understand the lion. Yeah. Get your foot in the door, and then once your foot's in the door, the rest of you watching this, you may enjoy the forty-seven thousand page articles about him. <laughs> and then you know what? You can get deeper into it. I'm proud of you. Yeah, you and- go find out. I am so excited for next week now, too, because I now that I know about the lion, it's like, ooh, I want to see what happens when he wakes up. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm jazzed, same. dude. I'm really curious how he's going to act, because the way he is in heresy times is a <laughs> monster. <laughs> yeah. So who knows what he's going to be like now? Oh, I'm so excited. Hell yeah. All right. Take us home, forest man. Sure. I don't know. I don't know how to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know.